Good day everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Whistle and today I'm going to be talking about ways you can get started in witchcraft and what you may need. Um, now it's a bit, you don't actually need anything, okay? Um, you need yourself and the elements, essentially. Um, so you could um, require fire, um, earth, water, you can do rituals with each of these elements separately um, or you could combine them, okay? Um, so what about a wand? What about a staff? What about um, the items that I may need, a pentagram, stuff like that? Um, all of these things can actually be found in nature um, and you actually already have a wand slash a staff. Um, so your wand is actually your finger um, and this can double as the athme as well. Um, I've found that this works um, for the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram where it says you require an athme but you can suitably use your finger. Um, there is a lot of people that say the athme is for banishing and the wand is for manifesting um, but I have perfectly used my finger okay uh, for the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. Um, so what about your star, staff or wizard staff? You are the staff, okay? Um, your body mimics what the staff would be, okay? Um, you can actually use your, phys your, your whole body as a pendulum. Um, you would need to put your feet flat together or right together, like where your knees are touching. Um, essentially, ask questions like you would a pendulum. Um, so you need to gauge your yes and no direction first. Um, and then from there, you ask questions again and you will kind of rock forward or rock sideways. Um, so that are, that those are ways that you can use your body as a human pendulum, okay? Um, so I'm going to talk about the three pillars and what you can do to get started in those three pillars and you may have already got started in those three pillars because I'm going to break them down in a very basic term because the last pillar, if you've watched my videos before, you might have heard me mention these. Um, the last pillar, you could call it an advanced pillar because it is invocation slash evocation but I'm just going to break it into incantation, okay? So the first pillar that I'm going to start with is the meditation pillar. If you're watching this video, you probably know what meditation is and you probably know how to meditate. Um, so if you already know how to meditate, I want you to experiment with different breathwork techniques. Take it your meditation to a, another level, essentially, okay? Do it in a different location, do it in a different seated position, do it in a different position, do it standing do it laying down, um, experiment with it, okay? Um, different breath works will lead to different results, um, so different states of consciousness, um, and some bre breath work techniques can lead you out of your body. Um, that's where the pillar of astral travel comes in with the meditation pillar, okay? So you probably already do these practices if you're watching this video, I think, I hope. Okay. Um, Second pillar is divination. Ways you can, you may have already started divination, you maybe do forms of divination regularly, a lot of people do. A lot of people try to predict like what's going to happen in like certain scenarios. Um, they try to work forward events so they can get an outcome in their life or they kind of, they got an intuitive guidance as to where they need to be directed. Um, sometimes you may predict the weather. You may say, oh, it's good. You've never, you don't watch the news. You're not one of those people that watch TV and stuff. You're like, oh, it's going to rain soon. And you just know it's going to rain and it, it starts raining. Um, you, can, you can feel that, that press, air pressure change. Um, but that is without tools and without tools, divination can be a bit more complicated. Um, it requires you to be more sensitive to your surroundings. Uh, to the energies around you um, that you may not be able to physically see. Um, but the, the most simplest divination that I've personally come across slash use is going to be pendulum, um, which isn't amazing. Um, I don't, you know, you don't get as many answers as you can out of a pendulum through tarot, for example. So a simple form of divination, the simplest one with, with a tool would be pendulum, in my opinion. But it's not that great because you're going to get yes or no answers. You're not going to get like details of something that you want. 
compared to runes or tarot. Um, so the next two simpler ones would be runes um, because there's less information to learn on the runes because you're only going to have a set amount of runes, you're not going to have 76 runes in a rune pouch. Okay. But then with tarot cards, you do have 76 cards, and each of those cards is going to have an upright and a flip position. Um, so there's a lot to learn in tarot, which is why it's a bit more complicated than uh, pen using a pendulum or using runes. Okay? Um, you don't have to use runes either. You can just use your own sigils that you make, um, or you can use sigils that other people have made. Uh, you can use yeah, you can use sigils that are out there already. It doesn't have to be um, Germanic runes at all, okay, or Viking runes, um, or on Ongam, okay. Um, last pillar, invocation slash evocation. Again, I'm going to break this into incantation. So you may do things like this already. The reason why I'm breaking this into incantation um, is because we're just talking about vocal vibrations coming out. You vocally speaking into existence what you may want. Okay, um, obviously invocation, evocation is a bit more advanced because you're drawing the essence of a spirit into your being. Okay, I'm just going to break this pillar down into a simpler version that you can use if you're kind of getting started. Okay, many people already use things like affirmations, um, so that is a form of incanta daily incantation ritual that you probably use. Um, to bring forth a better experience in your life, okay? Um, affirmations, you could call those incantations for yourself. Um, you may do prayer to yourself. Um, you may understand that you're God, so you kind of talk to yourself in a way. Um, you may, not even just affirmations, you may understand that speaking your reality into existence is how you get your existence rolling, if you know what I mean, okay? Um, so those are some ways that you already do evocation or incantation, okay? Obviously you're not doing evocation or invocation, but you're doing some form of incantation where you're sending out vibrational signals out into your world and those vibrations are going through your body and providing either cellular regeneration or degeneration, okay? Depending on what the vibrations are coming out of you. Okay, um, so what is a basic kind of incantation slash evoca invocation ritual that I could do that isn't necessarily a full-blown evocation or invocation? Um, the one that people get recommended the most is the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. Okay, so the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram is, it isn't that long, um, it, it combines something called the Kabbalistic Cross and the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Some people call the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram the whole thing combined, so the Kabbalistic Cross and the LBPR combined. That's what I prefer to do um, because when you're told to do the LBPR, you're told to do the Kabbalistic Cross. So the Kabbalistic Cross is a visualization exercise where you visualize beams of light coming down into you. Okay, or simultaneously vibrating the names of God forms. Okay, um, and that's the same for the lesser balancing ritual, the pentagram, except that you are visualizing yourself drawing pentagrams um, at the, f the four cardinal directions, um, and you're visualizing connecting those pentagrams with a blue flame light coming out your finger. Um, so it does require some visualization to do these. Okay, so visualization just closing your eyes and trying to picture and imagine the the object or what you're trying to visualize okay it's that simple um, it can be hard for some some there is a condition which stops people from visualizing if you have a condition that's like that um, you can speak out what you're trying to visualize okay if you cannot visualize I know there is literally a condition that people can't visualize. I forgot what it's called, um, but you can speak out what you're trying to visualize, okay? Um, just so your brain is kind of, it understands what you're trying to conceptualize, if you know what I mean, 
okay? Um, so those are just some beginner ways you can get started with the three pillars, and you probably already have. Again, if you're watching this video, my YouTube channel is all about spiritual videos, so if you probably know about meditation, you probably know about forms of divination, like you may watch tarot readings, you may, stuff like that. Um, you may watch people channeling, um, people with, anyone channeling is doing necromancy. Okay, if they're channeling disincarnated spirits through themselves, they are doing forms of necromancy. Okay, magic with the dead, or divination through the dead. Okay, um, if you can do this, you're already doing a pretty advanced form of magic. Um, yeah, and divination again. People, people probably I've already mentioned divination, haven't I? But yeah, but incantation or invocation slash evocation. Um, again, people already do, you may already do affirmations. Um, you may already kind of talk to yourself. Um, and you you may already kind of you may already be like a speaker. You may already be trying to vocally send vibrations out to manifest your reality. Okay, um, but I believe that is it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you haven't already. And I shall see you next time. Peace out.